guess what we're doing today? That's right, more fencing. Hey guys, Brad here. Deb here, Bella here. So what we're doing right now is we're raising these fence posts because the wire is four foot and these fence posts are in the ground a little bit too far. So we just want them a little bit above here in case we want to put an insulator on here later and run some electrical wire. I don't know what day it is, day eight, day nine on fencing. We predicted six days, but we're well, we're well past that. So uh, at this point, what's the point of counting, right? Yeah. yeah just a number. We thought this fence line would be a little easier because the T-posts were in already because that's the way we bought the property, but it's not proven to be the case, is it, Deb? Nope, not at all. Every T-post either needs to be raised, pounded in a little, or pulled out completely. Some of them are bent, some of them are too short, some of them are too tall. So I'm starting to wonder if we shouldn't have just completely just stripped down this whole fence line and started from scratch add in too that the clips that we got don't fit these older t-posts so it's been a challenge yeah it really has bella's supervising as usual some of these posts are just in too deep or too tight i can't get them to move upward so i remembered i had this pipe that we use to unroll our wire and it actually fits over here nicely so maybe with some more leverage i can get this done a little easier That is so much better. I think we all understand leverage, but sometimes, sometimes we forget. I like that so much better than lifting them up. It's kind of fun to do. It, it really is, that's a neat gadget. Or tool, it's a tool, I'm sorry. It is a tool. They're a little bit expensive, but once you make the plunge and buy one, it's worth every penny because if you're on a farm and you're putting in a lot of T-post, and if you're old, like me and Deb, <laughs> it wears on you quickly. So that's a, that was a worthwhile investment. We're recycling a, a lot of our T-post. Actually, we're recycling all of our T-post. But uh, we found a way to put in T-post pretty easily. And the way we do that is we set it with this manual driver, and then we use the tractor bucket to do the rest of the way. We're making sure that spade at the bottom goes in parallel to the fence. And now we're gonna use the tractor bucket to push it the rest of the way in. And the best way to do that is put a piece of pipe over top of your T-post or else your T-post might bend as you're pushing it down. But unfortunately, the piece of pipe I bought only works with a new thinner T-post, not these wider bladed T-posts that are older. So you notice a theme here on Piney Grove's fence. Our clips don't work because these T-posts are older and wider. And our method for pushing in fence posts with the, a pipe also doesn't work because the T-posts are wider. He said, oops, that one went a little too low. I got a little uh, a little overzealous with the loader control and dropped the bucket. So I actually have to pull that one up just a little bit. I don't know, my muscle memory or something, I, I went the wrong way with the loader. That's, that's basically what happened. I made a mistake. That was a dead move. I'm glad I got that on camera. He went down when he meant to go up. That, that's, that's a dead move. Hopefully I get to edit it. Maybe I'll edit that part out. But I'm the editor, so no. The joys of fencing in the woods, I brought the edger to create a little trench so we can get that fence tight to the ground or even maybe a quarter inch under the ground so predators don't come underneath. Fencing is a young man's, young person's job. Bet Brad's shoulders are telling him that right now. There's a little hump here from the pine growing and I need this fence to go down a little bit here so it'll be level farther down the line. So I just got to chop a couple of these pine roots out, but getting closer. The H brace is the end of the line today for creating this trench with the edger. Having fun? Well, I don't know if fun is the right word, but we are up to the second H brace. And I can't say enough about this idea. And I'm not trying to brag on myself or anything. <sighs> We happened to bring this edger out 100% by accident, by happen chance, and tried it. I actually took the guards off of it. It makes it easy, but I'm chopping through one inch roots and taking out, you know, a one inch uh, midsection or whatever so the fence can go in between. And it's been all the difference in the world. 
if I hadn't brought this, and I think Deb caught some pictures or some video of me using the axe, and that just wears you out. This right here, once I learned how to use it and uh, not actually get it caught in the fence wire, it's, uh, it's been a lifesaver. Usually we use the tractor as an anchor, but can't get the tractor at a good angle for this last and final stretch. So Bradford is chained into a tree. I can't find anything else to go to because this tree is inside of my line of pull. So not really sure how this is gonna work. Chain to the tree, come along to the chain. On one end, come along to the fence stretcher on the other end. Oh, the stretcher. Brad loves the stretcher. No, he doesn't. So it's just a series of four bolts that clamp the metal to the wood two by four. Very simple and very effective, but it's really hard to line up four bolts all at once. But it actually didn't go too bad. Looking all innocent, like you didn't just dig a hole. Oh, struggling with the come along. This cable was stacking on top of each other and pushing that up, which pushes that keeper up. And when that happens, you can't get all of the all the wire on. And I need every bit of this pull right here to get it tight. So it feels pretty tight. We're going to leave some tension on it while we go work some clips and just kind of let it uh, find its balance. You know, stretch out where it can stretch out. And then we'll try and put a few more clicks on it before we staple it. Now the clips that we have, and they're the clips that hold the wire to the T-post, they're not the right size. And so instead of it being an easy process, it's, uh, it takes two people, one on each side of the fence. Normally, we put up the fence wire and stretch it, and then Deb can come along and put the T-post clips on. So that's what we got. This wire was staying this way, and I had to push it up against the T-post and then Deb was trying to feed me the wire through here. And you can see we got it, but it was a fight. This one's going to be a little easier. I take and grab and get it tight. And then I pull it around. Then she does that. And then I finish it <laughs> like this. And then I close this one on this side. What do you think about that whole thing, Deb? I think it's just ridiculous. I can't believe the clips have been this difficult on this fence. It just goes to show how long it takes the fence and, and why we are on, and I was thinking about it earlier, we are on day, day nine or day eight? <laughs> I don't even know. We're on day eight or day nine. I think yesterday with the excavator pulling out stumps with day eight, I think this is day nine. Yeah. Can't see. Twist down. Number six. Oh, <laughs> and oh, only 45 to go. All right, Deb, which post is this? The last post of the day. So not, last post of the day. Yeah, not the last post, the last post of the day. When we get the four clips in this post, we will be 66, about two thirds, 66% completely done with the fence. And then we'll go put the staples in the end and let the tension off and then call it a day. Deb said there's a root there. I said, that's fine. And she laughed. Why'd you laugh? No, no, I said there was a root there earlier because it's our last post. And it's like, it's going to be a struggle, even the last post. So I pulled the root out of the way, and to which my supervisor told me, yeah, just pull it out of the way, after I'd already done it. That's, I'm a bit, that's why I laughed. I'm a big help that way. Next to last clip. Let's go let that tension off. We want to show you this real quick. You know, ever since we've had this land for five years, I've wanted to dig a fill dirt pit. Came in here with um, Precious, our excavator, and I pushed off this topsoil. So I got a, um, some topsoil over there with some litter in it. So we'll let that compost down. Then I dug this out down here where you'll see the oranges dirt. And then I made a big pile of this orange clay dirt right here that's kind of crumbly and dry. And then I took that with the tractor bucket and put it all along the fence line to fill in the holes from the stumps. But uh, that's why you'll see that orange dirt underneath the fence line. And also it's kind of cool that we've got a, a little sand pit here. Although it's the first time Deb's seen it and she kind of had a weird look on her face. Deb, when I showed you the, the sand pit, when I show you the sand pit, you didn't have the look of excitement like I thought you would have. Well, I didn't know what it was. He said, here, I'm going to show you something. And then he shows me this hole that he dug. And I was just like, oh, that's a nice hole. <laughs> I didn't know what he was showing me. Now that I know that it's a dirt pit, why are you going to get off of my business? Now that I know that it's a dirt pit, it's a very fine dirt pit. Now I can appreciate it. <laughs> 
Thanks, babe. I think it's a fine dirt pit. Bella thinks it's a fine dirt pit, didn't you, Bella? Against my better judgment, I'm gonna try and get two more clicks of tension before I staple it off. There's one. There's two. That's tight. I mean, I can hear it biting into the oak tree and I can feel it or I can hear it against here. So that's tight. We're gonna go ahead and staple that off. It's very important that I get these staples in good and straight so that they hold the tension. So I can't bend them over or miss. I don't know what's better, whether to put it directly on this horizontal where the tension is or to put it over here. I'm gonna put it over here. Leave a comment down below if you think it should be different. Since most of the tension is gonna be held by the heavier wire on the top and the bottom, I'm gonna put two staples on that one. Last one right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Last staple is in. The whole back fence line of Piney Grove now has stretched fence wire. All right, this is it. We're gonna release tension and call it a day. We appreciate you guys watching. If you would click that like button. Otherwise, that's all I've got until the next one. Remember, <laughs> life is short, tractor hard. Tractor hard, take care guys. Take care.